this is a nice data set, I think, that shows body condition scores that relates from the time the cow calves to when she has her first heat cycle. Cows that are in low body condition score, that's over on the left, body condition score three or four, it's on average takes them 80 days to have their first estrus cycle from the time of calving till that first estrus. You think about a cow that's on a 365 day interval, that means she would have to get bred on her first estrus cycle. And we know from a lot of other data that typically a cow's first estrus is not her most fertile. So it's really gonna be pretty challenging if not impossible for that cow to stay on a 365 day calving interval if she's going into calving in a body condition score three or four. On the other hand, the cow's in body condition score five or six, she's around 55 days to her first estrus cycle, and so she'll probably have at least one estrus before she needs to rebreed again if she needs to stay on it, or we want to keep her on a 365 day calving interval. I would guess plain and nutrition would have an effect. If we've got a cow in a body condition score four and she's on her way moving up to a five, then uh, we're going to push this 80 maybe closer to this number here. That's exactly right. We're going to show a slide coming up here that shows that. Okay. Here it is. <laughs> Nutrition direction that affects conception. This is a pretty interesting slide. This is actually pretty old data from 1962. So we're looking at data that's almost 50 years old. But what this data did, uh, they took some cows that were body condition score six and a half at calving and some other cows that were in a four and a half at calving, and they took both of these cows and they wanted them to be at a body condition score five at the time of the breeding season or 90 days after calving. The top group of cows, to get that to happen, they had them on a real low plane of nutrition. These cows were on low quality feed. They were losing body condition score. The cows at the bottom were on a, had a body condition score of four, but they were gaining body condition score going into calving. And on the far right, you can see what happened. The cows that were losing body condition score from the time of calving to breeding had a poor reproductive rate, uh, mid-70s. Those cows that were gaining weight actually had a very acceptable, a very nice reproductive rate in the mid-90s. So it's not only time of, it's not only body condition score at the time of calving, what's really critical is where is that body condition score moving? Cows that, this is on mature cows, uh, replacement heifers, this would be a different story, but on mature cows, this is score four, we can have them gaining weight, moving into calving, they can still reproduce and have a good preg rate. So we got cows that are in excellent shape, but they're losing condition score, we should not be surprised that our reproductive rates are disappointing. So we can come out a winner in pretty tough shape, and as long as we have an opportunity to put condition on those cows, uh, we might have pregnancy rates that are acceptable. Yeah, but again, the critical thing to remember is we have to have those cows on a pretty high plane of nutrition. When you think about 16 pounds of total digestible nutrients, that means those cows are over on excellent, really high quality feed. And so you're kind of running on the edge here a little bit. If you know you've got that and you're confident you'll have it, you can probably get away with it. If you get into a drought type situation, the results could be not so positive. Well, just to add to some of the things Aaron's been saying here, I'd like to show you a study that was done uh, in, by Don Adams and colleagues in Nebraska, and they looked at two different groups of cows, and these are large numbers of cows uh, in, in a study that was repeated for three years, and this is the summary data from that. Great study. And they had two groups of cows. One had an August wean where no protein supplement was fed during winter grazing, so they're weaning these calves early, and they're roughing these cows through the winter time uh, on dormant grass with no protein. And another bunch of cows was the, uh, was supplemented with protein during the winter grazing. And then they had a bunch of cows where they weaned in November, and uh, again, the same treatments. One bunch of cows was rough through the winter time, and the other bunch was fed uh, one pound of a 30% cake, which is not much protein supplement. And this is the results of that study, and it pretty well shows what you would expect. And this is looking at change of body condition score of these calves, or these cows. Uh, the bunch who early weaned, they gained a little bit of condition score in the fall, uh, and they, they went through the winter in pretty good shape. 
and uh, and then they de- declined in body condition score late winter and uh, and then rebounded as green grass came on and the other bunch with the later weaning calves uh, so these are our weaning treatments they decreased until that calf was weaned in November uh, rebounded some in body condition score decreased throughout the winter time and, and then rebounded again on green grass but look at the the range of these so th- this bunch of cows that were weaned late and rough through the winter time uh, they were in an average body condition score around a low four by the time winter got over and green gas came on and our cows that uh, had the earlier weaning and maintained their body condition a little bit better through the winter time came out of winter around a body condition score five. So what would you expect the breed up of these cows to be uh, after as, after green grass came on, they've put on some new, uh, condition, um, what would you expect the different breed up of these cows to be? Well, here's what it is. And and uh, this is really was a surprising number and, and one that they've spent some time fleshing out. But uh, the, the, really, there was no statistical difference between the two bunch of these calves. They bred, bred up just about the same, both in the mid-90s in terms of percentage. And the reason is, and the point I want to drive home here, is the plane of body condition score uh, is it really has a big effect on this. And you look at what these cows did after green grass came on, and both bunches of cows gained a lot of weight very nicely coming on that onto that green grass and really by the time we were into our breeding season the differences among these two different groups of cows was pretty minimal from just a 5 to a 5.2 so what this tells me is that we can use body condition score as a nutrient to help these cows get through the winter time we can allow our cows to slip a little bit as long as they have an opportunity to be on green grass coming back up in the springtime and uh, we will get pretty good reproductive performance. But I think the key is, is that period of green grass here. And uh, if we got into a drought situation where we didn't have that, uh, then it might be a different outcome of this. And the same is true here on the cows that were fed the protein supplement through the winter time where they maintain those cows pretty well on that little bit amount of protein supplement versus those cows they rough through the winter time and uh, they lost condition uh, without that protein supplement. But the same thing happened here, whereas these cows were able to come off of that uh, green, get on that green grass and gain some body condition score during that time of the year. And they both, both bred up fairly nicely. The only thing I would also add to what uh, Dallas talked about here is there's an effect that happens in utero when we're, we're supplementing cows. I mean, from this, you don't want to say, well, boy, why would we even want to supplement protein? But there's some things that happen in terms of fetal programming in terms of that calf in utero. And so it's interesting, they went and followed these calves that were in utero in these cows that were supplemented protein versus not supplemented protein. And the calves that were in utero being supplemented protein, their performance at weaning and on through the feedlot was better. The other interesting thing is the resulting heifer calves from this study, the heifer calves that were supplemented protein in utero actually had better reproductive performance as yearling heifers than those heifer calves that in utero were not supplemented protein. So again, as we just think about systems, uh, we do have an effect sometimes even on things that we don't see or think about, a long-term effect, uh, even from the little things we do. In this case, the protein supplement was not very much. I think it was about a pound and a half per head per day of a 30% type cube. And so that doesn't seem like very much, and it's not. But even that small amount had a, a really tremendous effect on those calves that were being developed in utero. Yeah, good point. I, I just think this is a neat study, and it just really shows the whole system, system-wide impacts of things that are going on in this uh, correlation of body condition score, reproduction, and, and those kind of things. So thanks.